before I cause any serious misunderstandings, let me just clear this little thing. The uh, signed short and signed long integers can hold numbers that can go below zero and go above zero. On my compiler, signed short integer can hold numbers from uh, from this negative number till this positive number. Okay, so sign short can go below zero and of course above zero. Just since it's short, so it can't, can't go very much below and very much above zero. And on my compiler, sign long integer can go uh, from this negative number to this positive number. So as you see the range is a lot bigger. But again these specific numbers are what the programmers of my specific compiler decided to do for my compiler and it is very possible that on your compiler or different other compilers the rules are not the same. But one thing's for sure that a signed integer can go below zero and above zero and that short is probably smaller than a long and that long is probably bigger than short. Uh, oh and by the way a little tidbit now that we're at it never ever try to compile your program with a whole bunch of gibberish in it all over the place. Um, you will get compiler errors for any little thing which is not real C++ code. So all these numbers and parentheses over here doesn't mean anything at all to the compiler so if we try to compile you will see a whole bunch of errors um, we don't know what all this stuff means so let's just take this all out of the way okay let's visit the other types of variables that we have in C++ here we have the float variable type and let's call one of these H just for fun the float variable type stands for floating point variable which means that this is a variable that can hold a number still a number but this number especially can have a fractional part like numbers like eight and a half and another whole bunch of fractional numbers well actually maybe not so many fractional numbers the float is a smaller version of the floating point variables. Um, if you need a number that's extremely precise in its fractional part, you might want to use the double variable type. And let's call this one J. And this one could hold a lot bigger fractional part. So the same rules apply over here. Uh, float variable cannot have a fractional part that's too big um, you won't get really a wrong number you will just have in this box nothing more than whatever it could hold so the rest of the long number that it can't hold will just fall out of the box and you'll only have whatever it could hold inside the box and the same thing is with the double type. If you give it something that's really, really, really too long for it to swallow, um, the rest of whatever it can't hold will just fall out of the box and it will hold only whatever it could. So these are, are your two floating point variable types which could hold numbers that have fractional parts. None of the integer types could ever hold a fractional part. If you try to give int a number with a fractional part all you will have in this int is only the whole number and none of the fractional part so in the end a will only have the number six inside of it so this isn't really a compiler error to give a fractional uh, number to the integer type it's just that ultimately you will lose all of this fractional part and you'll just have the whole number. Okay, let's visit another type of variable. 
This one is spelled char and stands for character. This variable will hold one and only character. Um, char can hold one single simple, excuse me, symbol of the ANSI character code chart. This means that it can hold characters such as uh, ABC until Z in uppercase, in lowercase, um, numbers, and a whole bunch of other symbols like commas and question marks and stuff like that. So let's create our char variable and call it H. And let's give H a value. The way we give a char variable a value of, of a symbol, we have to enclose this symbol in single quotes. So, I open single quote, I give my symbol, it could be a letter, or a number, or the dollar symbol, or any other of these uh, characters, and then I close the quote, and I have my semicolon. So right now, char h is a variable that can hold any type of symbol, and right now h is holding this symbol, the dollar symbol. This variable is pretty much the one and only variable that you will be using all over the place for information such as uh, a name, an address, something which isn't a mathematical value such as a number, like an integer or a floating point value. This is just treated as text. So like if your program is a chat room, and someone just types in a whole bunch of text and right now the text is stored in a variable this text message is probably going to be stored as a whole bunch of char variables one after the other each one with another letter of the whole phrase as a matter of fact when we would type c out output operator and then double quotes hello world what really happened here, as we will learn in the future, is we created a whole string of char variables. Uh, the first one having the character H, the second one having the character E, and then L, etc, etc. This is a whole string of char variables. Now, don't, don't get all freaked out and think that when you want to handle strings, you will need to make, like, 100 of these char variables uh, one after the other for every single letter of your phrase or whatever it is you're making um, there are very easy shortcuts used to make a whole bunch hundreds maybe even thousands of these character variables in a very easily manageable way as we're going to learn a lot later on about strings but just for now so we know the char is a variable which holds not really a number, but a sort of like a letter, or not just a letter, even a number or a symbol, something which is going to be treated as text, not as a actual value of a number. So let's try to see our character variable in action. Let's give it the dollar symbol and try to output this variable to the screen. Okay, we are going to output, we're going to print our h to the screen. Let's run our program, compiling, and here we go. Our output is the dollar symbol just as we assigned to our character variable. Remember, in order for something to be treated as text, if it's one single character, you will enclose it in single quotes. And if it's a whole long string of characters, like the hello world phrase, it has to be in double quotes. And the char variable can only hold one single letter at a time, so you can't give him a whole phrase with double quotes. You only give him one single character at a time in single quotes.